in response, we see credit default swap premiums for Credit Suisse shooting higher. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcady Economics. Hope you're doing well out there because in today's show, we're going to talk about some of the latest news going around in the banking sector. Obviously, we saw the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank in the last week, several of the other banks running into trouble. And then the latest news on Wednesday morning was a fresh plummet in the shares of Credit Suisse, which it's obviously been rumored to be having some issues for quite a while. And Wednesday morning, the Saudi National Bank, one of their largest investors, said that they would not be able to provide any further financial help for the bank. They do have a mandate that they can't go over. The executive of the Saudi National Bank also hinted that there were perhaps other reasons. I know they're not doing so well on their previous investment already, but as you can see, another plummet in the price of Credit Suisse. There was the move on Wednesday. And if we take a look at, in fact, let's go back to the one-year chart. You can see things have not been going well. Uh, and here is the five-year chart. So obviously, uh, all along at the same time, you have the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. And as we've talked about ad nauseum on the show for the past year or so, while they've been raising interest rates, that things might look fine until something breaks. And again, now running into some banking issues. And obviously, should Credit Suisse enter uh, an overt failure or Lehman moment, that would just pile on, obviously, a lot bigger than Silicon Valley Bank. And certainly, this latest news has not helped to alleviate any of the concerns about the banking sector, which, obviously, for many of the people who are into gold and silver, have held for a long time. Then we watch the decade plus of 0% interest rates and quantitative easing, which made things seemingly look good at the time. Although, of course, once the interest rates started going up, now we're starting to see some of the effects of the issues of that policy. Of course, at the same time, we do have inflation still running well above the Fed's 2% mandate. So not really an easy situation with any easy answers here. Although perhaps not shockingly, we did see that the Swiss National Bank was out later Wednesday afternoon saying they will provide liquidity if necessary. Again, if the Swiss National Bank is providing support, they're going to be doing it in the same manner that the Federal Reserve provides support by increasing their money supply. And in their statement here, they mentioned this isn't because of the problems in the USA and that those do not provide a direct risk of contagion. Although again, if necessary, the SNB will provide Credit Suisse with liquidity. So it's certainly interesting because a lot of the time people are looking at the dollar index, which is comparing the dollar against other currencies. And here you see why the dollar index has been seemingly strong over the last year, because most of the other central banks are doing some form of the same thing. To be fair, many of them are raising interest rates right now, but just as we saw over the weekend, how once things come to a head, that the central banks will step in and provide liquidity, seeing the same thing here with the Swiss National Bank, something we will likely see with other central banks in the months and years going forward, probably will be more like months rather than years, but certainly not a good situation out there because obviously the situation with the banks in the US was not good, although Obviously, Credit Suisse quite a bit larger, and if they do fail, then certainly would be interesting to see what the environment looks like after that. Again, that's why we talk a lot about gold and silver on the show, and whether it's one particular central bank versus another at a time. It's a pattern that I am confident we have not seen the end of. In response, we see credit default swap premiums for Credit Suisse shooting higher and something that we'll keep an eye on going forward, but certainly not an ideal situation for Credit Suisse out there right now and just for the banking sector in general. And just stunning to see how quickly, at least with the uh, Silicon Valley Bank, how quickly these things have escalated and become a problem. And makes you wonder what else is out there that's wobbling that we have not heard about yet publicly. And obviously the kind of thing that happens when you raise interest rates, especially as 
abruptly as the Fed has following such a long period of low interest rate policy. The one note that was interesting also came out Wednesday morning. We saw wholesale prices actually decline 0.1% in February. That was below the estimate of a 0.3% increase. And on a 12-month basis, the index was up 4.6%. Certainly makes it interesting to see what will happen with the Fed when they have their meeting next week for their latest interest rate policy meeting. Again, if you go back one week in time, the conversation was whether they were going to raise 50 basis points as they felt inflation wasn't coming down as quickly as they had hoped for. Now 50 basis points basically off the table and just under 50-50 that there will be a pause. And uh, as of this recording, 54.6% chance of a quarter point hike. Gee, I'm sure wondering what we will see in the gold and silver market, but gold in particular, if we do get the pause next week, obviously based on the last couple of weeks, that would be coming a lot sooner than expected. Gold already above $1,900 again. I wonder if you get that pause. Do we see $2,000 gold in our near future? Which would be pretty amazing given that we've just gone through almost a full year of the Fed hiking. Obviously, like we've talked about quite a bit here, as well as many other shows where market expecting some sort of pause or pivot at some point, which a couple months ago wouldn't have seemed all that far off at the March meeting. Although again, based on recent week's activity was not really seen as much of a possibility. And now we're just under 50%. Note here from Zero Hedge that now their market's pricing in 120 basis points of rate cuts by the year end. And they actually had an interesting graphic here that shows how this has changed. You see each bar here represents one of the Fed meetings throughout this year and then January of next year. Here on the left is the implied policy rate and the orange bars and shown on the right number of hikes. So as you could see, here's on March 8th and then March 9th, March 10th, you start to see the shape of this change quite a bit. Then March 13th, which was Monday when the markets open up, now you see it drastically shift with by the hour greater percentage chances of Fed cuts and bringing us to March 15th when I'm recording this. As of 9 a.m. on the 15th, you see that the market now pricing in a series of cuts throughout the year, which will be quite a juggling act for the Fed to balance. Obviously, uh, despite the producer price index coming in lower than expected, inflation rates still higher than that 2% mandate by quite a bit, yet when you have some of these issues in the banking sector, that's that's really the dynamic that since I started this show that we've been talking about that once you reach this point, there is no easy out. Although myself and many of the guests that I bring on the show have felt that when push comes to shove, that will resort to doing what it has always done, which is print more money. And now we are seeing the markets price that in. Obviously this changes quickly. And I'm sure if there's a couple of days that go by without any further news on Credit Suisse, we'll see these come back in a little bit. But certainly next Wednesday will be a big event for the Fed, and that is on March 22nd. Other news about the Federal Reserve is something that you've probably heard a little bit here and there. And interesting, Zero Hedge has an article here about whether the Fed is going to be talking about, well, maybe it doesn't need to be a 2% mandate. Maybe it can be a little higher. Uh, that's something that I've heard uh, several times over the past couple of months. And perhaps that's the sign you know when more printing is coming. Uh, seems like it's going to be hard to get that inflation target back down to 2%. Outside of something like a Lehman event and what we saw in 2008, which really does not appear to be off the table at this point, but Something to keep an eye on because while 2% was the target, these things do have a way of changing. And here's well-known investor Mohammed El Arian talking about it, saying you need a higher stable inflation rate, call it 3 to 4%. Don't think they can get CPI to 2% without crushing the economy, but that's because 2% is not the right target. So 
imagine this is not the last time we will hear talk about that and already been some speculation. And certainly if the Fed is indeed cutting interest rates several times throughout the end of the year, it would make it quite hard to get to that 2% mandate. So something to keep an eye on. Another thing that we keep an eye on here is the COT report from the CFTC. Obviously, they were down for the count for a couple of weeks. CFTC still catching up, but latest report out is February 28th. And of note, you see that the bank swap dealers here have gotten long silver, 43,000 contracts long, 33,400 short. So a long position of just under 10,000 contracts. So as you can see here, the banks were long at this point. We did have that dip here, but maybe a couple of weeks before they get caught up with those reports. But at least as of the latest data, the banks have been long silver, which generally one of the best indicators of short-term price activity of what is going to happen based on whether the banks are long or short. And certainly add on that the retail demand for silver has been quite strong. Uh, had Andy Sheckman from Miles Franklin on here on Tuesday, and he was mentioning how Sunday night into Monday was possibly the biggest day of demand that he's had in the history of the company, said at least on a one-day basis, exceeded what they saw during Silver Squeeze. I've heard similar comments from other dealers. Here, if you look at moneymetals.com, extreme volume alert, please expect two days in additional shipping time. And I think that's pretty consistent among the dealers right now. So a lot of physical demand. And again, this is at the same time that the silver market running a deficit. And we've seen drawdown on the LBMA and the COMEX. So obviously, it's not like you would want this overall situation just to see silver go higher because there's a lot of implications that are certainly less than ideal for people just trying to live their lives and do what they need to do to take care of their families. But certainly, at least as a silver holder, these dynamics are going in your favor right now. And we will see what the price does in the short term. But a few last notes just before we wrap up. Obviously, we hear a lot of the time about stress tests or this bank is audited. Saw this one, which was interesting. KPMG gave Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, clean bill of health weeks before the collapse. And obviously, we saw how quickly things unraveled with Silicon Valley Bank. So I'm not saying that the audit is not good or that some of these indicators are fraudulent, but just something to keep in mind, because even when these stress tests or audits come in, some of these things can change quickly when you have the type of environment we're in with the interest rate policy. And one last story here, just somewhat piling on to everything else that is going on. This was from Peter Schiff's Schiff Gold, and he talks about the exploding budget deficit is another big problem for the Federal Reserve. We had the second largest deficit ever in February. And of course, this is running into the debt ceiling, which has already gone into its extraordinary measures and has a couple of months until it hits that ceiling. And of course, to add on to that, the debt expense growing with the higher interest rates. So my expectation is that the debt ceiling limit will be raised as it has always been raised so far. But gee, certainly a lot going on out there, which is the type of thing that I've been concerned about since the housing bubble imploded. And we saw the response to that still remain a bit surprised that Markets have held this together for almost 15 years since then, but at least in terms of why I talk so much about silver as well as gold, these are the things that I've been concerned about and that coming to a head now, and certainly, I mean, we won't dig into the whole de-dollarization element today, but the idea that gets passed around in the mainstream media and certainly out of Washington that everything is good to go and the economy is in rip-roaring shape. Obviously, I would disagree with, and these are some of the reasons why. So with all that said, going to wrap up for today, although I did want to thank First Majestic Silver, who brought us this episode of the show. And First Majestic did have record production in 2022 and is expecting another record increase in 2023. Obviously, it's been a difficult time with lower metals prices, as well as getting Jarrett Canyon ramped up. Although, should we see the higher silver and gold 
price environment manifest. Certainly having record production in that environment would be the kind of thing that would be extremely helpful. So good to see that at least in the midst of all these conditions, they're set to continue setting a new record with the amount of metal they're producing. And again, you can find out more about First Majestic Silver at firstmajestic.com. And with that said, going to wrap up, but thanks as always for being here. And I will see you again a little later today.